All right, we got Paint the Knife, we got Disneyland Forever, New World of Color. You got some explaining to do. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dano channel. I am Dano and Disneyland Resort just kicked off their 60th anniversary diamond celebration. Diamonds. Now part of that celebration is three brand new nighttime shows including the Paint the Night Parade, Disneyland Forever Fireworks Espectacular, and a new version of World of Color. Now while seeing any kind of new show being added to the Disneyland Resort's roster of awesome entertainment is usually a really good thing, these were far from perfect. Now I know what you're thinking, Disney, not perfect, blasphemy, how dare you? Now don't get me wrong, it wasn't just the lack of sleep, maybe a mild case of hysteria, that had me enjoying these shows. They were good, and I may have even found a new favorite. But there are things that I think they could have done better, or even differently. Alright, so let's start with Paint the Night. Now I'm glad I could start this out on a good note, because Paint the Night was really amazing. Now, I've never been to Hong Kong Disneyland, and I'm pretty sure most of you haven't either, so this was like my first time really hearing or seeing anything having to do with this parade. The soundtrack, pretty much perfect. Seriously, mixing When Can I See You Again by Owl City, you know, from Wreck-It Ralph, and little bits of the uh, Baroque hoedown from the old Main Street Electrical Parade was the perfect blend of like a pop hit with a little dash of nostalgia that the Disney nerds should really approve of. Oh, the floats! Oh man, the floats. So the best way to describe the floats, it's as if the old Main Street Electrical Parade from the 70s got thrust 40 years into the future to today, and that's it. It's like a brand new updated version of those old things. The show even starts off kind of the same way with a big drum telling you the name of the parade, Paint the Night. Look familiar at all, huh? Yeah? Now the floats were a good mix of classic Disney like Tinkerbell, Little Mermaid, even a float just for the princesses, and newer Pixar favorites like Monsters Inc., Cars, Toy Story, topped off with the Sorcerer Mickey and his friends riding on top of little mini floats that really look like something from the original Main Street Electrical Parade. Oh, and Frozen. They couldn't just once leave out Frozen, could they? Just, just once. More on that a little bit later. One of my personal favorite parts about the whole parade experience is actually this little guy right in my hand. He is a new addition to the Made With Magic line. They've got other things like the glow ears, they've got a new Minnie Mouse bow, there's a fancy mitt, looks like Mickey's hand that glows colors. Now, being the artiste that I am, I felt it only right that I pick up the paintbrush. Well, the coolest part about this paintbrush was that you can change the color of people's ears and bows and mitts by shooting little bits of magic at them. And that was actually the funnest part of the whole parade was being able to like run around while all the ears were going off and just like shooting little bits of magic and just everyone changing their color. You can even pick like a different kind of color pattern. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's there. Cool little colors. And it shoots fanciness. It's awesome. Seriously, best invention ever. I had more fun messing with people and changing the color on the tops of their heads than I did anything else. Now these toys aren't just for kids. I actually ran into a couple other adults, if you can call them that, who were running around, shooting colors at everyone, and laughing their magical butts off. Now I wasn't close enough to the actual parade floats to test this out, but word on Main Street is that you can actually change parts of the parade, either the performers, dancers, outfits, certain parts of the floats. You pick the color pattern and you change it. Now this does raise a question to me, is what if everyone out there has one of these wands and you're all shooting each other like crazy? How do you really know that your color hit? Because I was walking around the hub at one point, like the second day these were out, and I just kept getting zapped every five seconds. It was just getting changed and changed. So how do you really know that you're controlling the show? Hmm? I guess I'll just have to go back to test it out. You know, for, for, for you guys. Dark. Now onto the fireworks show, Disneyland Forever! I'm really glad to see Disney kind of pushing themselves and changing that old formula of what a fireworks show is. This time around they're incorporating colorful projections on the castle, the small world building, the facades on Main Street, and even the Matterhorn! 
And the whole show is a nice mixture of references to old Disneyland attractions and Disney movies like Finding Nemo and, of course, Frozen. This time around, they used most of the song Let It Go, and I kind of wish they would. You know, I don't have to say it. Now, with all the new projections everywhere, it's kind of like you have to watch the show four or five different times from different places just to really get the full experience. So the weird part is, once all the explosions were done, they kept the colorful lights on and kept playing music. It was this weird thing they called a good night kiss. But it was just, it was strange and confusing. Now maybe it's because we were 15 hours into our 24 hour craziness, but I was pretty confused during it all. Now something like that could make sense if it was at the end of the day and none of the rides were left on because it'd be like, okay, nice calm music to send your butt out of the park, get out, leave, we'll see you tomorrow. But it wasn't, there was actually another parade that was gonna happen in like another hour. The music just kinda sat there and just kinda faded out, it was, it was really strange. Now the last of the shows was the brand spanking new version of World of Color. I'm just gonna come out and say it, this was the most disappointing of the three new shows. It was really different from the first World of Color, and if you've seen the original World of Color, you know there is nothing like seeing that show for the very first time. Oh, the feels, my feels, right in the heart guts. Oh. Now that show could really grab you by the diamonds. Now this new version, hosted by Neil Patrick Harris, seems a bit more focused on Disneyland history and kind of how it all started with the mouse. This next section is all about you. Me? Gosh, then what are we waiting for? Which brings me to one of my favorite parts about the show. They used the new style of Mickey Mouse from the new cartoon shorts, where he's kind of weird and creepy looking. It's like Ren and Stimpy. I love Ren and Stimpy. I've seen a couple of people's Facebook posts about it and I see they're kind of up in arms just about the whole new look of Mickey in general. So to incorporate him in a new Disney show is probably gonna make some people mad. So after that little Mickey Mouse history lesson, NPH brings up some footage and pictures of classic Disneyland attractions. And it's kind of weird because it's like CGI version of the Tiki Room and Splash Mountain. And while I'm really glad that Jose and the gang finally get some love in another Disneyland show, it is a little too weird looking for me to really enjoy it. And then somehow in the middle of all this Disney history, Frozen comes back on because they can't get enough Frozen ever. Once more, they use Let It Go and we gotta sit through that song and listen to it again. Seriously, is it gonna be in every show from now until the end of history? Okay, I get it. The movie made like a bazillion dollars. It's hugely popular amongst like all demographics, but enough already. Now, I even really like the movie. In fact, it's up there with like Aladdin and Lion King for me. It is kind of one of my favorites and it's due to that amazing soundtrack, but just, it's just too much is too much. Just stop, just stop it. And the worst part about the whole Frozen thing is it was totally just shoehorned in there. It didn't even make sense. There wasn't even like a perfect time for it. It was just like history, 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 frozen, more history. Now they did add a couple new effects to the show. Like there were these fancy colorful fire extinguisher things that shot up white smoke that was all lit up. And that was new and that was pretty cool looking. Now another thing I really liked was how the brushes seemed to glow in a different pattern than the ears did. So it was almost as if the ears were one part of the soundtrack and the brush was another. Now all that being said, I did actually enjoy myself during the show and there were a lot of things that I did like about it, but if I were given the choice, I would definitely take the original back in a heartbeat. Overall, I'm excited to see new entertainment options brought to the parks, even if one of them isn't as good as its original incarnation. Now, if you guys have seen the shows, let me know what you think of them down in the comments below. Do you have a favorite? Tell me why. Just put it all down there. Go on. No, no, I'll just, I'll just wait here right next to this uh, big red subscribe button. Mm -hmm. Keep typing. That's better. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a big huge welcome to all my new subscribers. There's been a bunch of you who just joined in, and I'm really happy to have you guys here. It's really cool. You guys thought I was worth hitting the button. Thank you. Just don't be shy, and let me know what you think. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. For me. Without first consulting my mom. That's very, very good point. What do you have in your hand right now? Some postcards. You know, it's very interesting. You have postcards. I don't have as many as you do, but I happen to have a postcard.